I immigrated to Canada in 1974, completed my studies at the University of Toronto. At that time, the focus of the School of Architecture was firmly on European and American architects. It was only when I started to practice myself in the mid to late 70s that I heard of the Parkin office and at that time it was a very different kind of practice than what it had been in the 50s and 60s. Um, I'm really thrilled that um, the CCA has started the process of digitizing this archive. I think that John C. Parkin has never really got um, his due, has, has been somewhat overlooked in terms of the history of architecture in this country. Um, he was the most prominent architect to bring international modernism to Canada. I've learned so much about John C. Parkin this week. And there have also been a lot of things that I hadn't anticipated finding and some interesting surprises. One of the uh, mornings that was very, very exciting is when um, a large file box appeared on the table here, and it was filled with photographs. And um, I realized after looking through that how much Parkin uh, really, really understood the power of the image and how important it was in terms of the photographs of his buildings, but also the photographs of himself, of which there were many. And he understood that very, very clearly. And he uh, partnered with uh, Hugh Robertson of Panda um, Studio, a famous photographic studio. And Hugh Robertson um, uh, took it to a whole new level across Canada and, and photographed a lot of the very important buildings of the time. This is a photograph of John C. by Panda. And it's very, very different from the rest of the photographs. In the, in the file box, because this is very, very graphic, uh, a light background, dark seemed to be common in those days, and it's very, very striking. And it has a similar quality, that black and white photography, to um, Panda's photographs of his buildings. Again, um, incredibly composed, and the contrast between uh, the dark and the light is very, very striking. Later that morning, another box was produced in which we found this uh, brochure that the Parkin office had produced um, of all their projects through the 60s. The last project was in 69. So um, that's a really remarkable document. Um, also, in the box of photographs, we found the famous photograph of John C. Um, standing and looking at his office, which is, you know, to the untrained eye, might look like a factory. It was filled with rows of desks, um, white men in white shirts with dark ties, and all of them were um, drafting. I had read also that this dress code was very much encouraged and that beards were very much discouraged. I'd also read um, that John C. had said, without a clear concept for professional practice, the art of architecture is impossible. And he was, um, he was very much into designing how the office worked in a very almost industrialized, machine-like way, incredibly efficient and cost-effective, um, and, and a very rigorous design control and buildings. They prided themselves of having buildings on time and on budget. Um, the brochure itself is also very interesting because if we would do a brochure nowadays of, of our work, you would you would very much express uh, the big idea or the concept of the, of the architectural design. However, this was again very, very pragmatic and described the structural, mechanical and electrical um, systems in, in quite a bit of detail rather than the concept. So um, I then read, which made the whole thing much clearer to me, why he's so focused on this aspect of architectural practice he was very, very astute because in the 50s and 60s, Toronto was a very, very different city back then. And to get the kind of commissions that he was able to get, 
He had to persuade conventional clients in Toronto to invest in modern design. And they weren't at the sort of cutting edge of architectural design. So what he did is he persuaded these important clients to, uh, to commission these buildings uh, by assuring them that they would be highly cost effective and efficient. So that's why he stressed the, the way in which his practice was structured and um, all those pragmatic aspects of um, architecture. As its name suggests, the international style was not influenced by place, tradition, culture. Um, the focus was more on uh, the forms of the buildings, a very simple, direct form, a sculptural in many cases. Um, the idea of, of a building in the landscape uh, was uh, very prevalent in John C. Parkin's early work. His house, which his, he designed for hi him and his family uh, from 1953 to 55, was on the bridal path north of the city of Toronto in the suburbs. And what was really interesting is um, in, the f in the archives, there are uh, original drawings and sketches that he did himself, I think, judging by the, um, the handwriting, the signatures, and so on. So the sketches were interestingly enough done uh, for the furniture that was going to be custom fabricated for the house. And here's a, a sketch. Um, and then uh, for the dining room table, which he designed as well, a very beautiful sketch. Uh, well, actually, it's a, it's a drafted very precisely drafted um, detail of the uh, method of fastening the tabletop to the legs. Uh, really beautiful drawing. And this is, this is the house. So again, it's the paradigm of a rectangular building. One story, it's essentially what we call in Canada a bungalow. <laughs> Um, in the landscape, and then he added the pool later. And here's a, a view of him uh, with as many of his photographs, including uh, cigarettes, um, with him uh, with the expanded landscape of the house. In 1965, which is 10 years after John C. designed one of his first very well-known uh, office buildings, the Ortho Pharmaceutical Building, he designed the IBM headquarters building in Don Mills. This was a major shift in his design approach. The office building was no longer conceptualized as just a rectangular slab in plan. It actually was a, an assemblage of cubic m forms, which created almost like a village-like massing, very, very different. So what is very interesting about uh, the, the IBM headquarters is that the plan form of the building responds directly to the topography of the site. Um, and it does say in the brochure that uh, by doing this, they were able to save a lot of money in terms of cut and fill of the earth. So still very much the pragmatist. But it's very, if you look at the plans, it creates a very, very different work environment for people. And that's very, very interesting. Essentially, um, John C. and his team are now thinking about orientation and human comfort. So the north and south uh, facing facades tend to be glazed with tinted glass to help with the sun with, and heat gain and glare. And the east-west facades tended to be more solid planes. So that in itself is, is very, very interesting. Also a very, very sculptural form, but much more intimate. So I thought this um, is uh, a wonderful place uh, to leave off this video.